over 250 million years ago, before humans existed, all life on Earth was on the brink of extinction. It was estimated that 90% of all animalia on Earth had become extinct. Even though there are many suspected causes, such as the sudden impact of a meteorite, the greenhouse effect is labelled as the most prevalent and has the most evidence to support it as the culprit. But first, let's look at what the environment was like all the way back 250 million years ago. It was called the Permian Era, containing a single landmass named Pangaea, which is also otherwise known as a supercontinent. Containing many different forms of animalia and fauna, such as the Edifosaurus and the Swimming Noltus. Pangaea also had many different environments within, such as extreme to less extreme deserts, swamps and swamp forests. Much like today, but we have many different other ecosystems prevailing. But there was one major difference that separated these two ages, and it was the Siberian Traps. A 2 million square kilometer area of which basaltic lava spewed out at a constant rate. The Siberian traps occurred due to a large metal plume forming and erupting over that large surface area. This plume was named a superplume. Mental plumes are when there is a large amount of extra heat and lava stored in the core and it wants to escape, forming a head which plows through the mantle and eventually releases into the open air. Knowing the landscape shows us how the earth was acting at the time, which also gives us an indication to how and what caused the mass extinction to occur. The idea of a colossal meteorite hitting our planet has been discussed and determined as the second most supported claim to why this extinction occurred. There has been large amounts of elements found in meteorites spewed throughout the permanent Triassic boundary, which is a key sign of a meteorite impact. But where is the impact site? A meteorite of that quantity should have left a humongous crater which we cannot seem to find. Unlike the crater of the meteorite which curled off the dinosaurs, which is positioned on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, it was dated back to 65 million years ago. Even if there was a very minute chance of the crater being covered and filled, there would be signs of stress or volcanic activity where it was hit. Due to there being no super crater found so far, the idea of a meteorite slamming into the earth and wiping out 90% of all animalia is almost completely negligible. This leads us to the idea of the greenhouse effect taking its toll on our planet. Due to the topography of Pangaea at that time, Pangaea was very unstable due to it being a very large landmass. This leads us back to the Siberian traps. It is speculated that due to the large amount of carbon dioxide emitted from the volcanic region for a long period of time over roughly 1 to 15 million years, it caused global temperatures to increase exponentially at a very fast rate. Increasing the heat kept in the earth by 5 degrees Celsius by forming a blanket of carbon dioxide in the earth's atmosphere. This in turn increased the sea's temperatures by the same amount. This increase in temperature is estimated to have caused underwater methane in permafrost to be thawed which released a large amount of carbon into the atmosphere once again. This is called a methane burp, which in turn caused positive feedback, which caused the Earth's temperature to rise and rise as more methane was thawed and released into the atmosphere, repeating itself over and over until no more methane in was in permafrost, and Earth's average temperature had increased by another 5 degrees Celsius to a high of 10 degrees Celsius above previous averages. The increase in temperature caused severe droughts. Plants died, causing a food chain collapse due to lack of hydration and soil quality, and such did a lot of the animalia. Marine life that required a regulated temperature to live and or feed, such as the swimming noltus, died due to these changes and also collapsed the food chain, causing mass extinction. The increase in sea temperature caused very anoxic conditions, otherwise known as acidic conditions. Whereas water temperature increases, the amount of oxygen being able to be absorbed into the water decreases. So there was a large decrease in the amount of oxygen in the sea, which caused many marine life to suffocate. 
This decrease in oxygen levels is expected to have caused bacteria which thrive in low oxygen level water to start growing and growing. These bacteria then start to produce a gas called hydrogen sulfide, a two part hydrogen, one part sulfur molecule. Hydrogen sulfide has a very distinctive yellow look and smell, which smells like rotten eggs. You can find hydrogen sulfide naturally around volcanic sites around the globe. Hydrogen sulfide is extremely toxic to animals and plants. As the amount of bacteria increases, the amount of hydrogen sulfide becomes overwhelming and can create clouds of hydrogen sulfide gas, which either suffocates or poisons animals and plants. Another problem with the formation of hydrogen sulfide is that when the right conditions are met, hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide can form sulfuric acid, which can then be deposited onto Pangaea as acidic rain burning or melting animal skin and melting or burning plants. The magnitude of this event in Earth history is that it was the single most significant and most devastating de extinction event. It wiped out 75% of all terrestrial animalia and 90% of all marine animalia and rounding up to 90% of all animals on Earth in that time. It had nearly completely wiped out the ozone layer and the sea had become too acidic for the majority of complex life forms. The landscape of Pangaea changed due to these events. Swamps became dry and arid, and desert became even hotter. Fires were more often occurring due to dry plant life. Extreme amounts of UV radiation was let into the atmosphere, which also contributed to the death of many animals. This graph, labelled Marine Genus Biodiversity, extinction intensity shows us the apparent amount of readily fossilized marine animals which has been found and relative extinction intensity regarding those. Even though this graph only shows a large 50% when it was estimated 90% was wiped out, there are many expected animals which we cannot find fossils for. This graph also shows us how intense the Permian-Triassic extinction was by relating it to all other major extinction events. Looking at how this event started, it started with a large amount of carbon dioxide thrown into the atmosphere. Today, we are producing large amounts of carbon dioxide and releasing it into the air, and have so far increased the world temperature by 0.97 degrees on an average since 1948. And we have a current carbon dioxide parts per million of an average 400 parts per million, which the carbon dioxide parts per million estimated at the time of the Permian Triassic extinction was 3,300 parts per million, which is eight times greater than what we have right now. Even though this does seem like a very much future event, if it does happen at all, there are many ways which we can prevent or delay the outcome, which was shown in history, and stop it from repeating itself. This graph shows us the concentration of carbon dioxide in parts per million in our atmosphere between 1958 and December 2015. There is a fairly steady exponential growth. This shows us that over the last 55 years, from 1960 to 2015, there has been an increase from around 317 parts per million to roughly 400 parts per million. The transition to our world being completely carbon emission free seems like it will never happen, but many countries and cities have devoted themselves to becoming completely re renewable energy based, and most at least plan to reduce their emissions by 50 to 70 percent by the end of 2050, such as the Australian Capital Territory. The Australian Capital Territory plans to have 100% renewable energy by 2025, and such as Frankfurt and Munich in Germany. These are only a small example of who are fighting for change in relation to our climate and air quality. The emission of large quantities of carbon dioxide can be lowered if we implement renewable energy, renewable energy being the most eco-friendly way to provide power to our civilizations. This implementation can help us reduce the likelihood of another natural mass extinction from occurring and help prevent other natural disasters from occurring and watching history repeat itself.